This is Craig with Carsalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to go through the Objective 4.3 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office 2016 Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is open up the 4.3 workbook. And we are going to start on the Sales by Weekday tab. We are going to create a pivot chart of the default type on a new chart sheet. Uh, so we'll show two ways of, of creating a pivot chart. They're both fairly straightforward. So we have a pivot table already created here. We're going to go to Insert, Pivot Chart, and then here's our clustered column. We're going to click OK. Now this creates it as an embedded. We want to have it as a chart sheet. And so what we're going to do is right click on here and we are going to move the chart onto a new sheet and we can actually rename it right at this point so we're gonna call it sales pivot chart okay so now we have a chart sheet um, which is our pivot table chart and that wraps up the first task next we're gonna go on to the shippers by location worksheet and from here we're gonna create a pivot chart uh, so this is the second way of doing it which is through the Pivot Table Tools contextual menu under Analyze. We're going to select Pivot Chart. And again, we want a clustered column. We could choose other styles if we wanted here. Um, so these are all, I think, fairly similar to what you'd see in the normal Insert Chart dialog box. So we'll leave it as a clustered column. OK. And now we have our Pivot Chart, and it is I guess you could say embedded on our worksheet. Next, we need to move on to the invoices worksheet. Once we're on here, we're going to create a pivot table and a pivot chart. So we're going to create a pivot table just like we've done before. Insert pivot table. We're going to do it on a use this table. We're going to create it on a new worksheet. All right, they've asked us to rename the worksheet Quantity Sold. And so we will use our shortcut of Alt uh, HOR and call this Quantity Sold. Once we're on here, we're going to insert a pivot chart. And I'll use my keyboard shortcut of Alt JT and C for chart. There's our clustered column. We'll click OK. So we have a blank pivot table and a blank pivot chart. We've renamed our worksheet Quantity Sold. We'll move on to our next step here. Next, we want to set up the pivot table so that the quantity sold is the sum. So I'm going to search for quantity here in the search box. There's quantity. I can just check this, and it automatically brings it down into the sum section. Next, I am going to go with a country and when I click the checkbox it automatically brings it into the row section where I want it next we want to also include category and when I click this it brings it again down to the row section so I'm gonna move this over into the column all right so as you've noticed as our table was built up here you also would have noticed our pivot chart also gets created. Uh, and so the previous examples didn't really show us of, of what benefits a pivot chart does for us or why we would want to use one. Uh, in, in this video, hopefully you'll see a, a little bit of the power that they have. And so they're just a much more interactive um, chart than what you get normally out of Excel. Now you could build an Excel chart uh, to have some interactive capability, uh, but it's, it's much more intuitive when you do it as a pivot chart. So we have completed the uh, last step here. Um, so to the pivot chart, we want to add the chart title quantity sold by category. Uh, so we can do that um, in our design. We're going to add a chart element, and we want to have a chart title. We're going to have it above the chart. And we are going to call it quantity sold by category and country region. A nice brief title. 
Uh, so now that's been added to our chart here. Uh, next, we want to see a little bit of an example of uh, what benefit pivot charts actually have for us, why we want to use it. So what they've asked us to do now is to select the data point uh, in United States seafood. So that is this uh, maroon uh, colored data point here. So this chart is interactive, so it's going to respond uh, based on what I select. So I've selected that point. I'm going to double click it to drill down. So I'm telling Excel, I want more detail about this. So when I double click on this, it says, okay, you can have more detail. What detail do you want? So I'm going to select state province based upon our instructions. And now this whole pivot chart has expanded to show not only the country, uh, but also the sales by category uh, inside by each province or state. Now, in this case, I don't have a very large window, and so it's compressed things, and it, and it looks a little nasty. So this certainly wouldn't be what I would consider a finished product. Um, but the other thing you can do, you can actually filter right from this chart. So if I want to see uh, just the sales for British Columbia here in Canada, I can click BC. And now I just have the results for that particular region. Uh, I can go back to all here. I can say, well, I only want to see the Belgium, sales in Belgium. Okay, there's our Belgium. It says blank here because there are no, no state or province level data in our table. Um, I can select Argentina, Belgium, Ireland, and now I can compare just those three countries. So by using a pivot chart, this type of interactivity is, is integrated and automatic. I don't have to go through a, a lot of special uh, Excel creativity to make it responsive like this, and it's much more flexible. I've built charts that with drop-down boxes that will respond to a few limited things with a pivot chart connected to a pivot table. Uh, it really, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. So that wraps up all of the practice tasks for the Excel expert exam. I'm confident that if you've worked through these practice tasks on your own, you've, you've studied those that give you trouble, that when you walk into the exam that you should be prepared and ready to go. Make sure that you subscribe. I'm adding lots of new content um, that is geared towards those who are intermediate to advanced level in Excel. Uh, and I'm trying to do it quickly as possible so that these are two minute lessons. Um, they're not going to take up a whole lot of time and they're going to give you some ideas of things that you can practically put into practice to increase your productivity and your value to your employers. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory.